Good morning everyone, welcome back to automation. So today I thought I would go ahead and make a donk, uh, but this time it's going to be a sophisticated donk because I'm going to be using this Bentley body here. So you can see this is a Bentley Arnage, uh, it actually shares the same look as another Rolls Royce as well. Both of those cars I believe came with a BMW V12, so that's what we're going to try and kind of fake today. But if you're not familiar, uh, we're going to be doing some like Midnight Club Dub Edition Remix style body styling here. And it's going to be a little bit off of the normal train that I'm on. Okay, I'm going partial aluminum. Uh, just because I don't want it to be extremely heavy, I might turn this down to corrosion resistant steel at some point because it's probably going to need to be heavier. <laughs> this car would not be light. We've got monocoque, corrosion resistant steel. Uh, it's obviously going to be a longitudinal engine in the front. And I was thinking about this last night. I was debating with myself what I should put on here. I'm going to do double wishbone fronts and I'm actually going to do uh, semi trailing arm rear. That's not a combo I'm used to, but. Yeah, it should work out for this fine. Now obviously we need a bang and V12 to go in here, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, it's got to be rear wheel drive as well. So let's put in a 9, 60 degrees, sorry. Cast iron, actually let's make it aluminum. And uh, let's make it a 6.75 liter. There we go, 6.75 liters. Let's do an overhead cam. Uh, this is 1994 by the way, so peak power and stuff is going to be a little bit more difficult to get to. We'll, but we'll do three valves and make the heads aluminum as well. This is going to be a really expensive engine. Now I know that these engines, like this this one is kind of based off of a BMW engine very loosely, uh, not really at all based off of that BMW engine, um, but let's go ahead and use billet steel. Uh, we'll use lightweight forge as well. Usually the internals of these engines are more than they need to be, like they're, they're detuned basically. Uh, so yeah, light, lightweight forge, like the good stuff is in here. And it's going to be naturally aspirated. I was thinking about turbos, but this car doesn't need to be fast. Um, it's going to be a donk, so it's not going to be fast. It's going to be EFI per cylinder. Let's give it a standard intake. Wow, that is huge. Okay, maybe performance is a little bit nicer. Yeah, that's that's fine there. Oh, just look at that valley though. <laughs> that's really cool. All right, right out of the gate, I'm making a really sweet 445 horsepower. That is a lot. Um, that's actually more than I wanted to make in this build. I was wanting to just make 400 and 420 or so. Uh, no, no particular reason for that. Good lord, 477 horsepower. <laughs> man, oh man, that is a lot of power. Uh, surprisingly so. Let's see if I can just get that. Yeah, 478. Okay, we'll, we'll just say 480 is kind of our goal then, and I'll tweak this up to be a little bit nicer. Like, the car, as I said, is going to be detuned because it's not really made for speed. Uh, it's made to <laughs> ride slow, and you'll see that in a bit. Alright, I'm pretty happy with this. That's 504 horsepower. Uh, 607 newton meters, that's a lot of torque. And it's coming in at exactly 100 octane, so if you don't put the good fuel in here, it's just not gonna work. <laughs> that makes sense. It's actually surprisingly efficient as well, considering how massive it is. Alright, so this car now has a 500 horsepower V12, uh, and I was thinking about this before as well. Let's go with the coupe. Very strange, but it makes a lot of sense for one of these cars. Okay, now the paint is extremely important because for the first time ever in a build, I'm gonna make it <laughs> pearlescent as much as I can. Alright, so I'm thinking orange with a green pearl, if I can fit that in here. I don't know how this is gonna go, but it's not gonna show in beam, I'll tell you that right now. Alright, so there's an orange <laughs> with a green pearlescent. Um, <laughs> that's really bad, actually. Uh, maybe a yellow orange pearlescent? It's like a gold colored... Oh man, that's it's like pea colored. Oh no, you know what? There it is right there. It's purple, it's blue, it's both. <laughs> that's gonna work out perfectly for this. A nice pearlescent purple. I believe it's just gonna end up showing up purple in beam, so yeah, we'll just have to work with it like this. Now in terms of trim, uh, that, that's pretty easy. It's gotta be chrome, and it's just gotta be kinda regular, regular chrome, nothing too fancy there. But these cars are just covered in chrome, so it has to be. And same thing with the wheels, and I'm actually going to paint the brakes chrome as well. Actually, let's paint them this color so it kind of matches up. <laughs> this is turning into a Joker car. Alright, so this is going to be an interesting one to decorate. Um, probably just because I do want to try to recreate the 
Bentley Arnage just a little bit. And uh, first thing I'm going to do though, because this is extremely important and the, the kind of the whole point of the whole thing, is I'm going to skip ahead down to suspension and then we're going to make this car look the part so I can design it the part too. Alright, wheels are extremely important because uh, the rims have to be massive. So I'm going to go ahead and make the tires as big as they can be and then I'm going to make the rims as big as they can be and we'll kind of just forget about the possibility of them blowing out. Uh, because it doesn't matter and oh yeah I forgot this is a mod body so the tires can be huge I don't know what I've done but I really really like it uh, this is going to be full commitment from me <laughs> my goodness I need to make this body into like an off-roader now a sand dune crawler with this kind of stuff cut all this out cut these out make them huge fenders oh no I, I have to <laughs> I wonder how big this can go, like it just keeps getting bigger. Okay, I've reached terminal velocity, and as you can see the uh, graph is a little bit broken here, uh, but the wheels are indeed huge. <laughs> I really, really am happy with myself, I gotta admit. Uh, and apparently you can shrink them, kinda? It's not really working, but I don't know. <laughs> Let me try and make these rims bigger now. Oh, this is gonna totally ruin it. Now that is the most donk vehicle I have ever seen in my life. Goodness. Okay, so we have to have 155s, or you can shrink them down even further to be 85s. It's train wheels with 75 inch rims. <laughs> oh man. I have to admit to you, I did not know that this was going to happen. Like, I, I did not know that this was a thing uh, with this body. I knew, I knew you can do this with some of them, but... I totally forgot that a lot of these mod bodies don't have restrictions, so now we have pie plates for wheels, um, and I'm very hesitant to change it. Alright, on to suspension. Now this is obviously very important now that the wheels are incredibly jacked up. I actually want to try it like this, um, <laughs> so I might make a special version of the car just like this, I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling. But air suspension is what we need. It's got to be adaptive, and oh wow, <laughs> that understeer. Um, don't, don't worry about that, it's, it's fine. Okay, I've gone ahead with a race preset, and it is, ooh, <laughs> it's getting low. You can make it taller, but, <laughs> there you go. It, I'm, I'm very surprised because the tires have not blown out, and the car, uh, despite having not much traction, is still fine. Like, wheel spin is an issue, obviously. Um, because, well, look at the size of these back wheels. These are literally wagon wheels, but yeah, everything else seems fine. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to call this one something different. I'm just going to call it the tall version. <laughs> Tack version. No, tall. And then I'm going to export this just as it is so that we can try it on Beam, and then I'll go back and fix it and export another one. <laughs> Because this is just too good. Okay, okay, I've had my fun. I think it's time that I lowered this down. It's going to take me a while to do it because, unfortunately, I have to click this uh, like a hundred times to get it to go down to a proper size. Okay, we're getting close to the diameter that I want. Uh, you can see, well, the game is really lagging. Come back, game. Uh, but you can see that it's kind of a little bit more realistic. I don't want to have to cut out the body, so let's go ahead and raise it as much as possible. I'm just gonna get it so that it's within the fenders and I might even keep it this big and just kind of do some cuts. Um, but let's see, front tires blew out. <laughs> Unfortunate, but uh, just the sacrifice we have to be willing to make here in the dub industry. Okay, so what I did is I increased the quality of the wheels quite a significant amount and I'm hoping that that will let me uh, have bigger wheels than I would have been able to previously, but look at that. That is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut out these sides, but other than that, this car is like prepped and ready to be a donk. Those are massive 36-inch wheels. All right, if you're wondering how I got inspired to do this, uh, let me tell you. A long, long time ago, I acquired a magazine. It's a, I don't remember what the magazine is called, but it is a magazine all about these kinds of cars, and to be honest, I don't really like them. Like, I, I don't really care about these cars at all. Uh, I'm not a fan of, of massive rims like this. I do like big rims, but overly massive and just kind of useless cars are, are not really my, uh, my forte. But I do have a magazine that um, 
talks about these cars so I got to experience the culture a little bit when I was younger and yeah it was um, <laughs> life-changing we'll say life-changing in the sense that I'm now making a ridiculous dub car uh, and also I'm thinking about buying Midnight Club Dub Edition Remix because I really want to play it. I kind of missed out on that as a kid. Okay, this does feel like a little bit too much of a cut on this uh, on this side here. Let me mirror that as well. But what I'm going to try and do as well is put some chrome trim around this new part that I'm cutting out. We'll see how well that goes, but yeah, I just want to make it so the wheels aren't um, cutting into the body too much. I'm trying to keep this semi-realistic. There we go, that, that is a steep cut there. Oh man, I'm liking this a lot. Uh, let me do the front and then uh, get onto the back wheels. Oh yeah, I know, you know you just have to commit to a gimmick at some point and uh, I have done exactly that. This is really, really gimmicky. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but it's 7.30 in the morning and when I started recording this it was 7 o'clock, so... Yeah, it's a little bit different for me um, to be to be doing this. It's actually Canada Day right now, so uh, happy happy Canada Day late by two days or three days actually. So you're probably questioning me on my choice of using a uh, race preset for this car. Obviously, it's not a race car. I, I, it's not a race car at all. This thing is going to be slow as heck. Um, but yeah, my my point with the race preset is it needs to be stiff because. Otherwise, the wheels are going to fly up into the fenders, and that's not what I want. I'll go back there once I'm finished this design, and then make them even more stiff. Okay, so the fenders have been very crudely cut to allow for the wheels to actually fit. Again, I'm going to skip forward here and uh, just make the springs as stiff as humanly possible, because we do not want this thing to... Wow, that is, <laughs> that is into oversteer now when it was understeer before, but... Yeah, stiff springs means no suspension travel, which means that uh, the suspension is not going to fly up into the actual car, because this thing is on bags. I'm not saying it can get any lower though. <laughs> Alright, while I think about how I'm going to cover those up, let's go ahead and do some more fun stuff. Uh, I'm thinking this car obviously needs some lights, and there do happen to be some very good mod lights for this uh, specific build right here. Uh, they just happen to go with these cars perfectly. I don't think that was by accident. Now this, I like. <laughs> Let's go with these, make them nice and big. Again, very loosely based off of the Arnage. Uh, it's also, um, I remember what the Rolls Royce is called, it's called the Silver Seraph. So yeah, um, again, very loosely based on that. I'm not going to copy a Silver Seraph exactly, although I would love to have one. <laughs> I think that they, uh, they look really cool. Um, I just wouldn't want to put gas into it. I will do a video at some point talking about my weird car tastes uh, because I'm sure that I like some cars that a lot of people don't and the Arnage is indeed one of them. Okay, so we have our lights, now we need our big grill. Uh, let's see if we can find something Rolls-Royce-ish in here. It's going to be the Rolls-Royce crossed with Bentley now. Nothing there. Ooh, uh, I'm going to have to make my own, aren't I? <laughs> okay. Okay, this shape is close, it's not perfect. Actually, it's not quite as close as, the, as I'd like. Uh, it doesn't have enough of a crown here, which is unfortunate because it could be really good. Uh, let me see though, I remember I had these kind of badges that stuck out before. Oh yes, I still have them. <laughs> oh yes, the weeping angel, here we come. Now that is absolutely brilliant and 100% perfect for this ride. <laughs> I like that a lot, but I'm gonna have to change this grill just because it doesn't doesn't fit enough for me. Now, let me see if I can find something that does though. Well, my knockoff Bentley's coming along well because this is the only grill that really fits it, even though it doesn't fit it that well. So <laughs> that's all I'm gonna be able to do there. Uh, it's not great, but it does kind of look the part. And my goodness, <laughs> I forgot about how big those wheels are. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Okay, these cars are often not very over-designed, um, they're, they're a lot of, they, they're very simple and they have a lot of uh, understatement as well, so I'm just going to kind of put on some stuff that I think works, um, it's probably not how it actually is on the car, but don't worry about that, this is, uh, <laughs> you don't really see these on these cars either, do you? And I know I've made a really bad cut here, so I will try to fix that. Um, what I might end up doing is just taking all this out and leaving the back as is. The front turned out nice, but the back not so much. I don't, I don't really like this. Like with this car, there is no hint of sportiness. It's all just 
like I don't know just luxury basically just plain like simple elegance that's kind of what these older cars are all about so I'm trying to fit that in uh, in terms of a style but <laughs> I'm not exactly good at that I'm definitely better at over designing things so it's taken me some time to get it right that doesn't look too bad though okay so I cheated a bit and I looked up one of what one of these things actually looks like and they do actually have sort of a, a shape like this under here maybe not that drastic but just something like that so I'm gonna make my own version nice and easy way to have a multi-layered looking thing like this is to take it and duplicate it then put one up a layer and then just kind of bring it down and, and then you've got uh, something with a little bit more depth just looks a little cooler but you can only do that three times because uh, yeah there are only four layers <laughs> I do wish there were more all right front end done <laughs> I like the way that it came out that is just flashy enough but also just simple enough as well it's the Rolls-Royce Bentley crossover silver serif Arnage oh wow pie wheels okay it's time that I added some basic features onto it I uh, we're, we're gonna need some uh, <laughs> windshield wipers that's a uh, necessary evil in terms of the lines of the car and then I'm going to need some door handles as well actually only one set and then I'll get onto the back and then we'll try and fix up some of this other stuff oh wow these are nice okay <laughs> thank you to whoever is making all these nice new mods <laughs> they're huge though let me see if I can find something oh, okay this is this is not what the car would have they're a little bit too old for it but man oh man I like them too much I can't say no to some fridge door door handles especially on something like this oh yeah those stick out like a sore thumb but my goodness they work well okay on to mirrors obviously this is important <laughs> people have noticed that I like to make mirrors small um, yeah that's that's just the way that I like to do it and I'm thinking on this car they'd definitely be uh, totally chrome just to ball it out just a little bit extra either that or we could body match them hold up ah you know what body match looks kind of cool and they do have a little bit of a chrome streak in them so still works <laughs> still cool yeah okay one thing I wanted to focus on before I forgot about it was exhaust because that's pretty important and I was thinking as well these pieces right here okay this is this is obviously meant for an exhaust but I could theoretically use this to wrap around the wheel if I can get it to uh, line up correctly it might not work but uh, <laughs> it looks pretty ugly but that does indeed cut out the wheel oh man that is really butchered <laughs> it looks like oh I thought if only I could make it rust colored but it does actually cut out the wheel really nicely it's unfortunate that it looks so bad doing it but yeah for now I'm just gonna go without those pieces uh, we'll, we'll come back to that later uh, but again for now back, back over to the exhaust um, it's really important that the exhaust looks right on here so what I'm going to do is use these downturned pieces actually they stick out too much dang okay no tip is definitely on my mind right now uh, let me see though I wanted to make it two pieces that kind of downturned but having them hidden like this is also good uh, like obviously I want the exhaust to be routed to the back but I don't want it to be uh, obnoxious because that's not how it is on these cars okay this is a strange one but I kind of like the look of these exhausts on the back here and I think that the actual car has something quite similar so I'll try to work with that on the back end okay so I'm gonna kind of copy the silver serif a little bit here and the Yonage again uh, I keep messing up whenever I say that <laughs> again I'm sorry it's early in the morning <laughs> okay these cars have very blobby taillights uh, I don't see anything in the taillights that really matches with that maybe these uh, we can see how much they stick out <laughs> the thing is that the taillights stick out a lot um, and that's kind of hard to replicate in this game not a lot of lights can stick out that far and these ones uh, can't either okay I have an idea these ones do stick out a little bit um, but I might be able to get away with something else here. Yeah, unfortunately, even among taillights, I mean headlights, there isn't really anything that works, so I'm just going to use these uh, with a little bit of messing around. But you can see they, they kind of form to the back nicely. That's not quite the style. Okay, let me try this instead. So if I put them on the side like this, and then I grab another set, flip those around too... <laughs> And I'm gonna have my own multi-piece taillights going on here yeah I mean that's kind of the pill shape it doesn't need that line in there but 
let's make this all chrome and kind of try and color it up a little bit and I should be able to get something out of it. Okay, that really doesn't look quite right, but I am happy with it. I think that it's going to work out nicely for this. I just need to make sure that these are aligned to the back properly and then, yeah, a very unique light setup on this car. Well, it's going to be a bit awkward because the back uh, backup lights here are massive. Um, maybe I can try and shrink those? I don't... Yeah, I mean, it's going to kind of work, but it'll be a little bit weird. <laughs> Just a little bit stretched looking. Uh, maybe if I put these up a layer and put these down. Yeah, actually, you know what? That's actually better. I, I do like that, so we'll go with that for this. Very strange, but uh, I'm liking these designs quite a bit. I've, I've already spent 45 minutes on the design alone, so you can tell it's kind of going somewhere. Okay, one thing I want to do is add this piece into the back because uh, we need some other things as well. <laughs> I'm slowly losing my voice early in the morning here, that's not a good sign. And then what I want to do is go to the body molding, uh, which is where I am now, <laughs> thank goodness for this stuff. It has saved me a few times, uh, but let's go ahead and use this piece to here to um, try and fake this in a, a little bit extra. Okay, that does actually stick out the perfect amount. So we'll just kind of glide that in. And obviously this isn't going to be the color that it was. So yeah, that, that's really, really cool. Let's go ahead and um, add a symbol to the back. It can't be the one that I already used. I already put an angel on there. So we're going to need a V12 symbol, of course, and a couple other things. And just some slight boasting on the side there. It says V12. And then on the other side here, it's going to say dub. In the fanciest script that I can find, dub it right down in here the uh, the subtle edition oh yeah no that is exactly what I'm talking about that is flawless and again we need a badge on there um, I, I do want to use one of these ones but I kind of already did okay I do like this little flying a uh, so we'll put that on it uh, yeah it fits nicely as well again just a little bit awkward but it'll be perfect oh wow I didn't even know I had this many badges, but there's even a Canadian one. Celebrate Canada Day in style with your uh, Bentley Arnage donk. Alright, a couple more small things. I need to add some trim to the car. It just looks kind of plain on the sides. And other than that, I think I might be ready to send it. I'm, I'm very keen on the back end. I'm, I'm a big fan of what has been uh, done here. It does need a plate though, I totally forgot about that. Seems like I'm hitting every province here, but we're going to put an Alberta plate on there. I don't know if anybody in Alberta could actually afford one of these unless they're involved in the oil industry. So uh, we'll just say that this is an oil mogul here. <laughs> oh yeah, so for the trim, uh, it's just going to be nice and simple. I'm thinking I'll use this stuff here. Um, as wide as it is, it is also uh, something that can be molded quite easily. So I can just kind of shrink it down and it sticks out just enough to be noticed. Oh yeah, that's that's perfect right there, and as long as it aligns with the uh, bumpers, then we're solid. It doesn't make a lot of sense to um, the door, like, it, I mean, practically speaking, you wouldn't be able to open the door, but just imagine there are little cuts there, uh, for, for your own sake. I mean, if you really want some realism, you can take pieces like this, and then uh, flip them around, shrink them significantly, like quite, quite significantly and then uh, put them up a layer. Oh, I can't grab it anymore. And just kind of fit it in there so it looks like it's cut. I mean, that is a cool detail, but it's just a little extra work. Yeah, there you go. From a distance now, it actually looks like the trim is indeed cut. So yeah, that works out nicely. And overall, I think the car is ready to go. It might be missing a symbol up here. Uh, yeah, thinking about that. But other than that, like my goodness, <laughs> that is nice. That did not turn out as poorly as I thought it would be. Okay, maybe I'm going a little bit over the top now, but I do want to include some lights in here. I know the actual car has them. Uh, so if I turn these around and just kind of put them like this, just a little bit of extra detail, and I think that's pretty neat as well. <laughs> just just a little something extra. Oh yeah, no, this thing is balling right now. That is that is flawless. Okay, time for the rest of the drivetrain and getting to the stuff that I skipped before. All right, so it's going to be rear wheel drive, as you would suspect. Uh, advanced automatic, four speed. It claims it can do 313. I don't think you'd want to with these rims. Uh, we'll deal with the spacing later. Actually, oh, you know what? We do have graphs, so let's go ahead and try it. This is max speed 308, and then the actual max speed is... Um, 
yeah, 309.7 seems to be the best that I can do there. Wheel spin is actually zero. I, I have no idea why. I do have a geared LSD, but I did put semi-slick tires on it. That, that might help. And the, think about the rotational mass of these wheels. Like, the engine has to turn that. So I increased the spacing just a little bit, so that's going to be fine just like that. And, uh, yeah, that, that should be good. I was thinking about turn off quality for some of this stuff, but as long as we're okay in terms of the graphs and things, then we should be good. I did put the wheels up to plus 15 because they kind of need to, otherwise they're going to explode. But that's all set up and nice and good. In the end, 36 inch wheels. <laughs> you don't see that too often. Brakes, okay, they're not even close to strong enough. I did put the, uh, the best brakes that I could, the vented discs, but obviously that's not enough. Um, <laughs> quality time, here we go. It doesn't matter if it's expensive, it's a Bentley. Okay, so the brakes now currently have an incredible front bias, uh, and I'm gonna have to turn up this as well. I really want to be able to stop. Race brakes it is. Oh yeah, no, we have, we have literal race brakes now. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's gonna be quite difficult to, uh, to stop this car safely. Aerodynamics, it has no wings, it has no spoilers, so it does make uplift. I did put a semi-clad tray on it, and I gave the brakes just a little bit extra, but other than that, it's good to go. In terms of interior, uh, somehow it has shifted back significantly, but it's got two nice seats, and then a bench in the back. I made it handmade, luxury CD. And uh, you know what, let's raise the quality of that. It's gonna lower our weight down a little bit. Um, apparently, we don't qualify for anything. <laughs> no idea why, though. Okay, apparently it's not sporty enough. Comfort is pretty crap. And uh, it hasn't got enough seats for a hypercar. <laughs> or it's got too many seats for a hypercar. Yeah, um, <laughs> convertible super, same deal. In terms of driver's aids and safety, uh, basically, I put it up to the best stuff, just because it's going to kind of need it, and uh, we're probably going to have to turn that down. I, I suspect that this car weighs a ridiculous amount. Um, air suspension, as you saw before, extremely stiff springs, and then um, let me see what I can do about the rest of the tuning, because this is a little bit lacking here. So the camber on the front is pretty significant. I don't think we need that much, so I'm just turning it down a little bit, and it is as high as it can get in terms of... Uh, ride height, unfortunately. Okay, I'm gonna increase the quality of the suspension. Not much is really happening there, but we'll just leave it up anyways. All right, 1,909 kilos. That's actually pretty light. That's a lot lighter than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be north of 2,000 kilos for sure, but a 504 horsepower aluminum V12, 6.75 liters, Rolls-Royce Silver Serif slash Bentley Dub Edition Remix. This thing is going to be great. Let's go try it out in Beam, see what it does, and uh, hope for the best. Alright, well here is the Arnage in uh, Beam NG. It doesn't look that good, as I predicted the pearlescent paint does not come through to Beam NG. Um, as also I kind of predicted back in the uh, earlier part of the video, I'm not sure if I said this or not. Oh yeah, look at Peep what's back there as well. The front tires and all of the tires are very very delicate, and uh, they will break incredibly easily, including when you just spawn the car in. Like, as soon as you spawn the car, the tires deflate, and uh, it doesn't work at all, so... <laughs> yeah, let me drive it around and show you what I'm talking about. It still drives, but uh, yeah, it doesn't drive very well, which is kind of to be expected with a car like this, so... Don't be too worried about it. I wasn't expecting to take this thing on the track. I don't even know what I'm going to do in beam. Like, this thing's all about cruising, so... You just cruise with your V12 nice and slow down the street. Uh, maybe um, open up the windows and blast some music. That's pretty much it. It does sound good, though. The V12 in it uh, sounds pretty nice. Um, having blown wheels is not great for sliding. Uh, yeah, it does have really good quality wheels. But I think I needed to turn the rims down one or two sizes to uh, to make it actually functional. And I don't want to do that, because that just defeats the whole purpose of this thing. And the front end came out perfectly. It looks exactly like I wanted it to, except for the grille, which is just a little bit off. But it's not a big deal again. Um, overall, the car makes a lot more sense in automation than it does in beam. I'm just happy that stuff like this actually functions, like, I'm driving around a creation that should not exist. This thing is an abomination to nature, and, uh, 
you can probably see why. <laughs> oh yeah, the suspension is suitably stiff as well. I'm glad that I made it that stiff. You go over a bump or something, and it barely even moves, so <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted. You would probably be shocked to find out that it is relatively quick, especially for something this massive, and uh, <laughs> it takes these jumps pretty well until you crash into a pole. Okay, and then we have the highly contrasting, uh, absolute beauty that is the tall edition with its uh, pie dish rims. Um, this thing has a couple of issues. Um, one of them is that it doesn't steer. I'm turning it back and forth right now and it's not doing anything. That's because the wheels are so massive that it cannot turn. <laughs> so if we shift into drive, all we can do is drive straight. That's literally it. Uh, this would be a good salt flat car. <laughs> That's about it though. Um, yeah, that's all I can do. Just drive straight. Also, it does happen to brake itself if you turn it into park. Uh, you can see I'm currently doing X kilometers an hour. The game is braking and the screen is shaking. I think it's time I got rid of this thing because it appears to be possessed. Yeah, just never put it into park uh, because that's what happens. But it does indeed drive without rims, or wheels actually. You're just driving on chrome at this point. And there you go, there's a chrome burnout for you. Oh, actually, hold on. Let's try and do that just to see how many sparks come off. Turn off the ESC, and... <laughs> oh, man, what has my life come to? Okay, let's get rid of that cancer, and we'll move back over to this cancer. Um, instead of doing a usual thing where I just kind of drag race these cars and... I don't know, I'm just gonna drive around and <laughs> talk about things. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the way that this came out. I'm, I'm very pleased. I knew that it would kind of be janky and beam, and obviously it is, but in automation, it looks great, and I really did uh, spend a lot of time taking pictures of it as well. Usually I know when I like a car based on how many pictures I take of it after I make it, and this one I have like eight or so, uh, ones that you'll probably see in the thumbnail. Um, if I do it the way that I want it to be done. But yeah, I'm really happy with this. I'm really happy with the way things are going. Um, I don't really know what to do with it, though. I mean, we could just kind of roll down some streets blasting music, but uh, that's going to have to be added in post because copyright strikes. I think what I've made here is a reasonably efficient, totally donked out Bentley Arnage, and at the same time, a uh, Rolls Royce Silver Seraph. <laughs> At least it has some nods to that. If you want to check out this car, I might post it in the Discord, just let me know. Uh, other than that though, that's it for this video. So yeah, if you enjoyed this build and you want to see more like it, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I make an automation video every week. And also, I've been doing SnowRunner and a bunch of other stuff. You'll definitely want to check out that stuff as well. Not quite as popular, but still the same quality uh, that you're used to here. Okay, I just found out it's possible to completely lose the front rims, and uh, on this car as well, it's possible to spawn it in and have it not be able to turn at all. So, a <laughs> little bit of jank. Ah, there we go, that's a little bit better. Still broken, but hey, no big deal, we'll just drive out onto the docks. So yeah, thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys again next time. You've seen the dub edition, here comes the remix. We've got Canadian Steel, Overlord, Dr. Ivo, That Rice Did Explore, QT, Bear, Terry Williams, The Most Random Person, Sick D, Cars and Stuff, Boris Ramirez, Jug, Jacob, and Ruben. Thank you all for your support.